Sharks are abundant in the Bahamas, where the sequence was filmed. For a fair dent in your wallet, you can drop into the tropical seas of Grand Bahama and be guaranteed an encounter with many sizable beasts. They are conveniently conditioned to regular feeding by the staff of the Underwater Explorers Society, who are appropriately cloaked in chain mail to prevent the loss of extremities as they pop morsels into gaping shark jaws. Now the waters of the Bahamas aren't too dissimilar to the waters of Madagascar. Tropical, with abundant fish life over a bed of coral reefs, providing plenty of pickings for shark at the top of the food chain. And the shark are evident to see. However, southwest Madagascar doesn't seem to have a great many sharks. It has warm tropical waters, like the Bahamas. It has abundant fish life over a bed of tropical reefs like the Bahamas. But where are the sharks? With Blue Ventures we dived up to three times a day for three months off the shores in the area of the Valondriac Reserve around the village of Endavadoc and didn't see a single shark. Not one. Despite the huge shoals of fish and obvious productivity of the reefs. In fact my first encounter with a shark in Madagascar came not in the water but out of the water in the village of Andavadoc, and would perhaps start providing me with an answer to the question of why there weren't any to be seen in the water. While walking through the village, I was stopped by Tamar, a Blue Ventures employee, who informed me that some fishermen had just brought in a large shark which they had caught offshore. Eager to see it, I immediately followed him and we ducked between the huts to find a two metre hammerhead shark in the early stages of butchering. Sharks are a lucrative catch for the fishermen of the Vezu tribe who inhabit this area, principally because of their fins that are much in demand to feed the industry that puts shark fin soup on the tables of the Orient. Unsurprisingly, the fins were the first prize removed from this shark. Unlike in other parts of the world though, the rest of this shark was not wasted. Within 15 minutes the fish was gutted, sliced into huge fillets and divided amongst the fishermen who had pulled it in, and carried off in a traditional fashion, slung beneath a pole held aloft between the shoulders of two villagers. The only parts that weren't used were the head, guts and spine. Special care was taken with the fins, carefully salted to preserve them until they could be exchanged for some much needed cash in this currency starved area. While the fisherman had a cup of coffee to recover from his exertions, I contemplated what I had just seen. Could it be that as in other parts of the world, sharks were threatened here by overfishing? Sharks are a good indicator species helping to provide a picture of the health of a marine environment. If sharks are rare, it could be because the reef is unhealthy and can't support them, which seems unlikely considering all the life we have seen. So the likely answer would seem to be that they are being overfished. But to properly determine the cause of the rarity of sharks here, research needs to be done. Only after this can the cause be determined and only then can the shark fishery be managed properly. That is why Blue Ventures are monitoring the shark fishing activity along this coast. A long day sailing north of Endavadoc, I came to the island of Nosy Bay, which has some of the highest shark catch figures along this coast. I'm sitting in a hut here in Nosy Bay now. Nosy Bay is about 40 kilometers north of Endavadoc, and I've come up here with uh, two guys called Fila and Patrick to see the shark fishermen over here. So we've met up with the uh, data collector that Blue Ventures employs over here. It's well after dark and we've arrived well after dark so he's uh, been roused out of his hut to come and meet us and he's going to take us out to go fishing for shark in the morning. Around 300 shark a month are pulled in off this island, so Blue Ventures have employed Theo to keep tabs on the shark fishing activities of the fair zoo here. Right, we're about to go and look for sharks, or hakiwu. And I don't speak French, these guys don't speak English, so we try to make ourselves understood, but we'll see. 
This is Theo. He's the Sioux collector here in Nosy Bay. And he's going to show me where to find Hakiwu. Ah, I'm going to find Zero. My name is uh, Theodore. It's Theodore. Oh, yes. You're going to help me find Hakiwu. Yes. So we can camera Hakiwu. We boarded his pirogue early in the morning and sailed way offshore to watch the fishermen in action. The method is simple, although brutally physical. Extensive nets are held in place by fixed lines offshore of the barrier reef about 15 kilometers out from the main coast. On a daily basis, these nets are hauled up from the depths by teams of Vezu men to check for catch. Muscular and time-consuming work. I entered the water to see what was there. And so came my only underwater encounter with shock off Madagascar. A small hammerhead entangled mishappenly in the ropes of the net. As I examined the animal later in the pirogue, I marveled at its fascinating form. I would far rather see this creature alive underwater, left to thrive and find its place at the top of the food chain, like its big brother that I had seen landed earlier in my trip. Perhaps the data collected by Theo will determine where all the sharks have gone and allow the Vezu to produce an effective fisheries management plan for these amazing fish. Then their demise along this coast will cease and perhaps divers will once again see shark along this coastline. And if those divers are anything like me, they will probably be prepared to pay top dollar for locals to take them diving to see the big beasts in their elements along the reef. Maybe then it will be more lucrative for the Vezu to keep these fellas alive beneath the waves and they will thrive like they seem to be doing in the Bahamas.